<laughs> wow. This is my final drive, but it's only the start of part two of my adventures with the Maserati, so I can't be sad. Everything's about to kickstart again because I'm gonna have a whole bunch of new experiences driving the Gricali, driving the new Gran Turismo. Make sure you tune in to part two where I get to test drive a bunch of Maseratis, pick the best one, take it to Formula E, and I'm gonna be meeting a whole bunch of people along the way. Welcome to HRO in Hatfield, my local supercar dealership. I live only 10 minutes away from here, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Supercars of London, a place that I have visited many a time down here. And today, we've got a beautiful collection behind me of the latest and the greatest from Maserati. So in the middle here, we have got the all-electric Maserati Gran Turismo Folgare, which in Italian means lightning, and this thing has got over 750 brake horsepower. We have also got the Gran Turismo Trofeo, which is on my left, your guys right. And then right at the end, we have got the beautiful yellow Gracale Trofeo. Now, throughout this video, not only am I gonna be selecting my next daily driver out of the three models behind me, but I'm gonna be driving that car to Formula E for the e -Prix this weekend in London. And you are gonna see exactly how I select one of these cars and then what I get up to at Formula E. I got completely lost. Grid one. Yeah. 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 There we go. You made it in line. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> oh. Who's going to win? Bruno. Cheers. You, Thank you. <laughs> this is a little bit strange considering how much of a staple the Maserati Gran Turismo has been over the last 20, if not 25 years. We've seen so many different variations of it. And to get an all new Gran Turismo and it'd be fully electric. Now I know we've got the Gran Turismo Trofeo, which is already number one on my list, but I want to start with this. We've got a hundred percent range and it is currently reading 262 miles which I wouldn't necessarily say is too bad. I'd like to think if we are pootling around town and fiddling around with the different settings that we might be able to get closer to 300. I'd like to give it a go. However, today we're not going to be doing that. Road noise is minimal. The suspension's pretty good so far. And we're going to head out onto a country road that is one of my favorite roads to drive around to give it the ultimate test. What driver modes have we got here? Max range. That's more like it. 280 miles now. We've already dropped down to 99%, so I reckon you'll be able to get 300 miles out of this. I'm just gonna plant my foot here and see what happens. Whoa! <laughs> hey, it's got a little wobble as well. It's got a little EV or uh, acoustic sound internally in the car. Oh, that sucks my stomach in. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> it's got a very progressive torque delivery. It's not snappy, it's not instant, it's not like the novelty that you'll get from some EVs. Like when you put your foot down, like it does pick up a little bit like a naturally aspirated um, engine to kind of give it a little bit more character and then, wow. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, <coughs> It's way faster than I was expecting it to be. Corsa mode. So we've been in sport mode. There we go. Oh. It's less progressive, more instant, even deeper noise is coming from the speakers inside this car. Steering is dialed in, the front end feels switched on. And it is an absolute riot. Now straight from the EV. <laughs> Into the V6 and listen to it purr. Actually sounds really good. Should we just stick it into sport mode instantly? 
Ooh, it goes really deep. I've got a feeling that I'm gonna be really impressed with this car. And this is what I mean. When I started part one of this YouTube dual episode series, I said that I'm gonna become a Maserati connoisseur with their latest products. And the fact that I've driven MC20, which really is the pinnacle of automotive perfection within the Maserati brand, and actually pretty close to supercar perfection as well with its looks, with its driving capabilities, and its all-round performance. We're now hopping into a car where my bar and its expectations are really, really high as a GT car. <laughs> Sounds good. The gear shifts are fast. I've got it in auto mode, so I wasn't flapping paddling, but it's just got a little bit more character to it. Oh, and it's quick and it sounds good on the upshifts as well. Whoa. Yeah, this is fast. Got a G-Force reader as well there. So let's put it into manual mode. Selected. Just gonna wait until I get around the corner here. Then I'm just gonna give it some. Wow. Now when you shift in the paddles. How good does that sound? <laughs> and from the outside, it looks like it's a quite a big car. It carries some great road presence. But my God, does it shift. Listen to the noise there. There's some burbles that are coming off on the overrun. And we're now gonna give it some beans. Whoa. Whoa. That is properly quick. Properly quick. I am having a rather splendid day. 26 degrees. Just got thrown a bunch of Maserati keys, which by the way, by the way, Maserati have massively improved the key, which on old Maseratis was always one of my frustrations with the brand. You wanna feel like you're holding something special. And the big blue plastic chunky keys of old have now been replaced with a beautiful leather and stainless steel key like this. And it really is part of the experience. It really makes you feel special. My GoPro just turned off because it got too hot. That is how much of a beautiful day it is today. This leather here is so hot already. It's saying 25 degrees now in the car. But what I was saying was, it's part of the experience, this new key. And I think Maserati have really elevated their luxury, their quality, their attention to detail. And you can see that all throughout. It's beautiful materials, there's details everywhere. They've thought so much and carefully about how to really convert the Gran Turismo into this ultra luxurious GT. And I think now I need to head inside, have a conversation with the guys and tell them which car I'm going to take. I also need to have a little bit of lunch because I am starving. And I'll see you very shortly in the car that I've chosen to daily drive for the next week. It doesn't matter how early it is or whether my vocal cords have been warmed up ready for this morning, but to have two automotive events at the magnitude of Goodwood Festival Speed and then Formula E in London, the pinnacle of the Formula E series, the championship could get decided today. And to have them back to back is the perfect excuse to not only have that MC20, which still such a strong memory in my mind of how good that car was. But then to be in the Gran Turismo, again, so iconically Maserati, you look in the interior, which by the way, is an absolute beautiful place to be, but it doesn't remind me of anything else in the automotive space. So Maserati have gone in their own direction and they've absolutely nailed it. It is lovely, intuitive, luxurious, the materials, the sound system, everything is spot on in this car. But then, 
to be traveling to and from London, a little bit of motorway, a little bit of country road, and then obviously the city driving, this is the perfect car for it. The MC20, whilst it's a great supercar, that Goodwood Festival of Speed Run was exactly what that car was built for. The country lanes, the early morning, the empty roads, and a little bit of dual carriageway and motorway, whereas the Gran Turismo is just a little bit better suited for almost every other road. So, <laughs> two car garage, MC20 Gran Turismo Trofeo, however, now, whilst I did love the experience of the 750 brake horsepower Fulgure, I am going to be experiencing that today around the Formula E track. So I'm gonna have the perfect example of what that car is capable of without any speed limits. A little bit like MC20 up the Goodwood Festival of Speed. So I'm gonna sit here in comfort mode, enjoy the Gran Turismo, get to Formula E, immerse myself in qualifying and race one where we could see the champion be crowned today um, and also get hot laps. Look at us swirling! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a helmet that's doing my face any justice, but uh, yeah, I need to put this down. No, I don't think it goes, I think it's already too tight. <laughs> But my face is a bit squished, but this Maserati helmet is lovely. You commented on it straight away, right? Yeah, right. You're it's jealous. Good. It's it's more or less like mine, but yeah. mine is better. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> ah! Oh, it proper sucks your stomach. And this is a workout. <laughs> you cannot keep that camera still. Right? No! Oh, these chicanes. Oh. Man, this is a ab workout for sure. Wow. <laughs> oh. See, most of the track now is indoor, it's super nice. 20 corners, different surface here Whoa. again. And here we are. Corner. <laughs> I can't convey on video how much of an ab workout I just had. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> you are always tense, yeah. Oh my god, that was intense. Bruno. Cheers. Thank you. Man. Thank you. <laughs> Race day, heading down the paddock or behind the pits. This isn't the paddock. There's some hot laps going. Well, yeah. You can just about hear them in the distance. You followed Formula E way more than I have. Whilst I was in Monaco for the Gen 3 Evo launch just before the race, this is obviously a bit more your bag. I'm coming down to experience it. How are you finding it now that we have got the final race happening tomorrow but the championship could get decided today yep. in race one it's really cool because there's four drivers that could be crowned champion uh, either today or tomorrow so it's pretty exciting to follow this track is awesome how it goes inside and outside I've i didn't realize but you've been around it yeah 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 okay how is it how is it it's the... so tight i don't know how they're going to be able to overtake i know qualifying is a big part of this but you're just going to have to lunge and i yeah. think there'll be quite a lot of contact as well was it weird coming from inside and going outside and, really. and vice versa? There no. wasn't like that thing like, no. you know, in Monaco when they come out of the tunnel, it's like quite blinding. Yeah, there no, the, no, because there's no sun in England. So. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> that would be why then. You joined me 24 hours on from Formula E and what a race weekend that was. I mean, the Formula One was good, but the Formula E, the world championship being decided on the last race of the season in London and the results were not as you would expect going into that race weekend. So a lot of fun to experience that with the Maserati team. Speak to the personnel and understand a little bit more about the relationship between their road cars and motorsport and how that technology is transferred into the road cars, which makes total sense because a highlight of mine over the last two weeks, of course, driving MC20, what a supercar that is. My first drive in that blew me away. But actually to go out and have a hot lap with Bruno Correa, who is the Formula E safety car driver and the World Endurance Championship safety car driver in the Maserati Gran Turismo Folgore, which stands for lightning in Italian, it's exactly that. That car surpassed all of my expectations. I had such a blast and a massive ab workout going around that track. That car is frighteningly quick but still provides such a luxurious experience as well at the same time. I need to have a go 
in a grand cabrio, Volgare, in and around Europe, in the sun and the mountains, tick, 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 unbelievable. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this double episode with Maserati, Goodwood Festival Speed, Formula E in London, a lot of fun. Take care guys, head into the link in the description if you wanna learn more about what Maserati have to offer and um, have a little play around on the configurator as well because I've been doing that. And the MC20 in like a satin white or a satin black ticks a lot of boxes. I'll see you soon guys, take care, goodbye.